Hey guys, black holes are a phrase that everyone seems to know, but a lot of people don't seem to know too much about them. I'm Danny Berg, this is Most Amazing Top 10, and today we're going to be talking about the things that have such a strong gravitational pull that if anything gets too near at all, it can never escape. Not even light can get away from them. For many years, black holes were almost the stuff of science fiction, and even today, a lot of what we know about them is still just scientific theory. We're kind of like tiny ants trying to figure out out what's happening on the other side of an ocean. But what we do know about them is absolutely mind boggling. So here for you is our top 10 mind boggling facts about black holes. Prepare guys to be mind boggled or we owe you one mind boggle. At number 10, you, yes you, are currently orbiting a black hole as you watch this. At the center of our very own galaxy, the Milky Way, is a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A. It really deserves its supermassive name, coming in at 44 million kilometers across and its total mass is equal to 4.3 million of our suns. And whereas we orbit the sun once every year, our own solar system completes one orbit of the galaxy and the black hole inside of it once every 225 million years. Yeah, space is, uh, it's big. Number nine, black holes affect time. A black hole is essentially a very dense tear in the fabric of space. The gravitational pull is so strong, if you were watching someone get pulled into it, it would look like they had essentially frozen in time if you were watching them. But for them, time will continue as normal until they get, you know, ripped by the black hole. Anyway, the science behind this is all contained within the theory of relativity developed by Albert Einstein. It's very cool stuff, but we're probably going to save all of that for another video because that's what it deserves and we're not going to go into it too much here. Alright, at number 8, black holes are born when massive stars die and collapse. They have to be absolutely massive though. Now our sun is about 333,000 times the mass of Earth. It's huge. Now try and picture a star that's 20 times the size of our sun. That's how big stars have to be to create black holes when they die. Unlike normal sized stars who die and shrink down to tiny little white dwarfs, these giants become unstable when they die. The immense gravity overcomes the star's natural pressure and it starts to collapse in on itself and expel its layers out into space. What's left is an area that is infinitely dense, very, very tiny, and has almost no volume and what's known to astronomers as a singularity, but you can call them black holes. At number seven, the nearest black hole to Earth is called V4641 Sagittarius. Not a very catchy name, but don't worry too much, guys, because it's 1,600 light years away. That means if you were traveling at the speed of light, it would take you 1,600 years to get there, so it's pretty far away. When scientists first spotted it, they actually thought it was a star. But then they realized what they were looking at was actually a star orbiting the black hole and being slowly absorbed by it. The super hot gases were able to be detected by Earth's telescopes. All right, moving on to number six. Now, a lot of people think that Einstein was the one who came up with the whole theory of black holes, but he only had the science to support it. They were first proposed way back in 1783 by English astronomer John Mitchell in a letter. He put forward the idea that if light is affected by gravity, then a massive object could have enough gravity so that nothing, not even light itself, could escape from its pull. He called them dark stars, and today we know that concept as black holes, and we know that John Mitchell was incredibly ahead of his time. Halfway through now, guys, at number five. Now, because black holes stop light from escaping them, they are technically impossible to see as we know it, but scientists can still indirectly see them. Firstly, they do emit small amounts of thermal radiation, known as as Hawking radiation, and that's named after famous physicist Stephen Hawking. They also bend the light of stars and galaxies between them and Earth. And also, in 2015, a huge moment occurred when astronomers detected the first ever gravitational shock wave from two distant black holes colliding and becoming one. So yeah, they can be hard to detect, but we are getting better at it. I say we, I mean scientists. I personally wouldn't be able to detect a black hole unless I was actually getting pulled into one. Next up, you'll notice that at no point in this video about black holes have I used the word suck and that's because at number four black holes don't actually suck. After everything we've talked about you wouldn't be to blame for thinking that black holes are just like these giant vacuum cleaners in space that just consume all the matter around them but the truth is matter just falls towards them because their gravity is so 
so strong. If you replaced our own sun with a black hole that had the same mass and gravitational pull, we would continue to orbit it from a safe distance. Think of it like a bed sheet that's kind of spread out like this, and a heavy object was put onto the sheet, it would create a dent that everything else would tumble towards. The dent isn't sucking everything in, everything is just falling towards it. Now at number three, did you know that anything can technically become a black hole? Now we've talked a lot about how stars form black holes, but that's because they're the only things in the known universe that have enough mass to create them. But technically speaking, anything that has mass can become a black hole. You just have to compress it enough. If you compress the earth down to the size of a peanut, it will become dense enough to form a black hole hole. Crazy. And guess what's crazier? You have mass too. So technically speaking, if you were compressed down to a small enough space, you could become a black hole. So if you're not sure what you want to do with your life, consider becoming a tiny black hole. It does come with a pension. Coming in number two now, black holes could be a source of energy for us in the future. The edge of a black hole is known as the event horizon. Any closer to that and matter cannot escape from it. But on this edge, material orbits the black hole very quickly. The radiation that this creates could potentially be collected by humans. In 1983, physicists George Unruh and Robert Wald suggested lowering a sort of energy collecting device to just beyond the event horizon of a black hole and then collecting the energy from it. A black hole converts 14 times more of its mass into energy than nuclear fusion does. Some people are even saying that this energy source could be harnessed to power future spaceships out there in the universe, especially now that the price of gas is so high these days. And finally guys, at number one, let's talk about the biggest black hole we know about, NGC 4889. It's located in an area of space called the Coma Cluster, and that's about 300 million light years away from Earth. And it's kind of hard to get your head around just how big this thing is. Remember earlier we talked about how much more mass the Sun has compared to Earth? Well, this black hole has a mass that is about 21 billion times more than our sun. What? Its diameter is 130 billion kilometers across. Now it sounds absolutely terrifying, but these days, don't worry, because NGC 4889 is more of a sleeping giant. It actually ate everything in its surrounding area, and it's now classed as dormant. In fact, it's so peaceful there that stars are now forming in the leftover gas and orbiting the sleeping giant until one of them gets too close and it wakes up for a bit of a cosmic snack. Well guys, I could honestly sit here and talk about black holes all day. I really could, but it seems we've run out of numbers here. I guess 10 just isn't enough. But guess what though? You guys could request more space videos if you want, if you really want to, and we can continue to have our brains blown by how amazing our universe is. I'd like that. Maybe you would too. Either way, leave your comments and suggestions for future videos down there in the comment section below. I'm Danny Burke. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find it somewhere down there. And thanks as always for watching. Most amazing top 10.